Hey, no, nah, we definitely are live. Hello, everybody. Not many on yet, but I had I have to get started. I don't have a lot of time today, and it is freezing in the shed. I've got a little thermometer in here to make sure I don't do anything silly, like cook in the freezing cold or cook in the freezing cold, cook in the really hot or freeze in the freezing cold. So I've got, yeah, I'm a bit like Shrek. I'm green and I've got multiple layers at the moment. So trying to keep warm. Of course, my fingers are exposed, but we'll survive with that. So at the moment, I've got camera one, camera two over here. And you can see these are the stones that we will be just touching up a little bit. Of course, I cut these all on the channel pretty recently. I've only got... What is that? Four. So I've only got four of them. One of them I haven't released a video on yet, so I can't I can't spoil that by chucking it on. Morning, Matt. And this will... Yeah, I'll chop, I'll chop this up and cut out the starting part and the ending part where we just have a chat or whatever. And it'll still remain on the video, on the YouTube channel. So hopefully we can highlight a few important little handy hints to know. Actually, I'm probably not that cold to need that one. Hopefully the microphone's going okay. No one said that it's not yet. So this should, should be working. 13 here. Yeah, it's pretty, it's, I'm basically outside. So whatever the temperature is outside, that's, that's what I'm feeling here. I'm just in like a roller door garage. I don't have any, any kind of fancy setup here. So unfortunate. One little trick that I'll say right from the start though is if it is freezing cold and your fingers are dying, you can do a lot of work with warm water. And that's what I'm doing, except, actually, yeah. All right, this water was warm about two hours ago. Audio quality is good. Yeah, so the water water can be warm. Water can absorb a lot of a lot of energy before it uh, before it disappears and evaporates. So we all know that water boils at about a hundred, unless you're American, and then it's something else in Fahrenheit. But it it doesn't. You're not producing that much heat. You'll find that even if you start with warm water, it's definitely going to get cool as you work along. And today we'll just be using this little guy because I'm not using my normal Dremel. It's not going to produce a lot of dust or anything because normally I would wear. These in all my YouTube videos, I'll be wearing these, and I'll also be wearing this one. So it's a just a pretty standard P2 mask. You can keep them zip locked up and keep them free from dust when you're not using them. It's a uh, yeah, very good. I don't tend to wear safety glasses because I've got this. Well, you can't see it right now, but I've got my uh, normal splatter shield, which I made a video on as well. But I also have safety glasses everywhere because I mean I wear them 90% of every day. So. Um, would you like to buy a twenty dollar heater? Well, I've I've tried a few different heaters, and basically the room is too big, and with two roller doors at each end of the room, no heat. I just can't keep any heat. I was gonna ask how much water exactly to use. Too much. Yep, we will go over that. Oh, and also this is from Mike. So in the chat there, Mike waves. This is a, a little a little thing he sent over from the US. So it actually plugs into a transformer because it's got a US power plug, which is good and bad. Like, I had to buy an extra transformer, but because it's stepped down, it's actually not as dangerous if I was to just dunk this in water and try to electrocute myself. So I typically would use the flex shaft for everything, and that is this guy over here. Actually, I can get the whole rotary tool over here. This thing, I'm so worried it's going to die sometime soon. 50 bucks, all inclusive, except for, of course, like, sintered diamond tools and stuff. But, yeah, this Ozito is uh, an absolute champion. Can't believe it's lasted as long as it has. It'll probably go four years soon. Actually, it's probably, it might even be over four years. But, yeah, instead we're using little Dremel Stylo. Just slightly underpowered. Of course, because this is mains power and runs on uh, 170 watts. And this one here is much less, like 9. So 170 versus 9. But this does pretty... It's a pretty good champion, champion little tool for what it is. And really quiet. If I turn it on... If I turn on the transformer... Professional... 
There it is. So that's on. That's right next, right in front of the microphone. So yeah, nice little tool. And it, it goes really fast. It, it definitely goes fast. It's just for rough carving, I don't have very much luck with it because it, it just slows down a little bit too much. And I do worry about burning it out if I do that because it's only a 9 watt. Small coil, but it's all right. It works well. And we have more people in here than I thought. You need head loops in the store. Oh, I can't find a good supply for head loops, not even for myself. So a lot of the time I use, I don't know where mine is. Yeah, I don't know where mine is. I cleaned up the shed. I cleaned up the shed recently and moved all my rough and everything when I did the Opal giveaway. Well, the currently running Opal giveaway. So I've got them all bagged up into their different, uh, different categories of Opal. So that giveaway will be drawn in the next week or so, I reckon, because we've got a lot of people in it. And next time I'm going to have to do more than one prize because I am amazed with how many there are. Hello, everybody. Have you thought about using an aquarium pump for recirculating the water? I have, and I do. I've got a bucket and system all off screen over this way. So that's the, for the flat lap, though. It's not really for the... Uh, for this just because when I record with the with the camera like I'll switch the camera over now hopefully it doesn't make people seasick so when I switch the camera over now if I'm using water and it's kind of dripping down here or slightly off camera when it hits the burr it'll typically just shoot straight up get on the camera and then you can't record anything if I'm not on camera I am typically cutting in a sink actually with the tap on but that's mainly just for rough grinding a boulder opal away more than anything. Um, so we'll just quickly make sure. Make shorts. Shorts are shorts are interesting. I haven't nutted it out fully yet. It's kind of it's kind of strange because it's like a vertical short. Oh, not a vertical short. It is also short, but a vertical like small window. And I don't know. You have to make it on the phone, and my phone is this one here, and it's like 10 years old it's not that good the camera quality is not good if i get a new phone maybe i'll do shorts i know youtube are pushing it pretty hard how do you sign up for giveaway i had a giveaway video where you could just leave a comment below that was one point and then the new website roysrocks.com i anyone that signs up for an account there automatically gets another two so yes all right, let's have a look at what we're doing. So I think step one, I'll show you what I do with my cerium oxide. I've been very careful not to disturb it. Here we go. So this is the little container. I've got a 250 mil container here, so about one cup. And all I've done is once I've chucked in a teaspoon of cerium oxide powder, the uh, super cerium that I have. Let me grab a pouch. Or a couple pouches. So I've been selling a little, what that? Super Serum Oxide. So it's better grade, it's a better quality than optical grade. Much smaller, much cleaner. And basically all you do is add a teaspoon to a cup of water and this is it. And I've been using this cup of water for a long time. You can keep topping up the water as it disappears. But to start it up, basically, you just get your little felt tip, uh, get it spinning, and then we will just crank the speed up a little bit. And you should see if I'm not in the way. Well, I am in the way, but you basically just blend it up and you're good to go. You are good to go again. And you can do that infinite number of times. Just try not to get it contaminated. You just need to mix it up and it'll suspend and it'll be perfect consistency. For non -op for optical grade, like the old... Uh, do I have any under the desk? I think I might have given it away actually to someone that bought some burrs and stuff from me because I don't need it anymore. If you have the lower quality stuff... Camera not focusing... If you have the lower quality stuff, you actually need to use it much thicker. There we go. So now you can see it looks a bit like milk. But for, yeah, the low quality stuff, you use it much thicker. And I think, from what I can figure out, 
with the little testing that I've done, I think using it thicker, it's like, it kind of grinds it up into a smaller, making it closer to this stuff here, and then you can really get a nice polish. It's how they do car windscreens and stuff, and you typically use it as a paste rather than a, uh, than a solution like this. Ooh, camera really doesn't like to focus on the milk. Focus on my finger, focus on the milk. Yeah, so it's just a really thin, really thin watery solution because you need the water there for it to do the chemical reaction with the uh, surface of the silica. Is it the same as the black lighters oxide? Um, it's similar. I've got the black lighters one. They gifted it to me before I developed my own. And yeah, I mean, theirs works. Theirs works really well. It does work really well. I just got a uh, manufacturer to start making my uh, making my own serum oxide and aluminium oxide because I mean I've tested I think now almost three dozen different powders so I finally got it I finally got it right uh, one cup to one tablespoon no literally one teaspoon like oh uh, is it two and a half teaspoons to a tablespoon so half a tablespoon if that's what you've got you really don't need much you're just suspending it in a very thin solution. I mean, you can put more in and I mean, it might get a slightly slightly better result. You really just need the water there. That's the most important part. I like that I'm keeping my finger here to keep focus. So yeah, it's just in water. What settings is your camera on? Oh, the opals are a little bit far away from the uh from the light source. So when I move the opals across, it'll look a lot better. Uh, one actual question. What kind of dust mask are you wearing when you wear one? So I just use P2 minimum. If I was cutting dry, I wouldn't trust the P2. I would probably upgrade. I've got a lot of other masks like a bit more, bit beefier, a bit more upgraded so I can get chemical resistant filters and everything on it. But really, even then, I'd just be using a really small, small fine kind of filter. So a bit better than P2. Scientists more faith in this serum. Well, I actually, I, uh, a bit of an inside scoop, I actually made some serum oxide. And in terms of pricing, I would have to sell it for thousands of kilo to even make my money back. So that's not the way to go. At least I know that I can, uh, I can hook up with a factory and get it made at an incredibly low price. Much lower than buying the chemicals and making it myself. And it takes a long time to make the way that I did it. But it was a bit fun. Uh, I use a red colour serum. Yeah, I used to use a red, either red or pink. Different people call it different things. But yeah, I'm just using this. This is actually a slightly off-white. Off so it's got a slight yellow tinge to the powder. It's not quite as white as what the aluminium oxide is, which is just pure white. Absolutely colourless. Uh, did it? So yeah, I think I've been using an N95. Yeah, N95 P2 is the uh, is the equivalent, depending on where you live. So N95 P2, basically the same. So you're doing well. I use a snorkel. Well, that's how you truly cut underwater, and you'll never produce any dust then, will you? Now, oh, let's get this out of the way. Bring the opals back, and I don't know. You guys wanna wanna pick one? I don't know how I'll arrange this. Maybe clock face. So we've got we've got one at twelve, three, six, and nine. So if you guys wanna have a quick quick stab at chucking a number down. And I will get to work on that. Most of these just need the serum oxide polishing for a while. So we'll just go over that. Why am I not at the Opal Festival? I cannot get away from work at all, really. I will actually be away for a week coming up. Well, towards the end of next week, I'll be away. But I'm going to have some videos ready to go to put up in that time. Uh, how did I know 9 would get... Yeah, alright. I think it'll be 9, so I'll just move him over here. Get rid of this opal there, and brace yourself for the swing. We'll do it nice and slowly. 
So that's the corner of the aquarium fish tank. And there we go. We'll come over here. There we go. And the lighting's much better in this spot. Hopefully we don't spray too much water and serum onto the face. Yeah. What does it look like on screen? It does not look as good on screen as it does on my little camera window screen. It's a bit unfortunate. I think that's just YouTube compression. YouTube compression. I need to find some better capture, capture pathways. I think I can get it a bit higher quality, but it'll do, I think. You can see quite a bit of color. With this one, it would be hard not to see the color, to be honest. And this one actually has the best polish of the lot because of how uh, how good the opal was. I spent a lot more time on it in the video. So it's pretty good. It's just got that pochy, pochy imperfection on both sides towards the point. But really, it's a fossil opal. It's going to have, most of the time, it's going to have some sort, of, some sort of imperfection in it. So yeah, this one's a really nice one and doesn't need a lot of work, but we will work on it. Hopefully I can just get all the angles right so you can see past my hands. Cameras suck at capturing opal colour correctly. Oh, I don't know. I'm starting to warm to them a lot. It's really the light. The most important thing if you're capturing opal is the light. A terrible, a ter a terrible camera can still capture an opal pretty well if you give it the right light. It's just the right light is kind of hard to, hard to nail. Uh, I can actually see, yeah, all right, I can see all of your comments on this other screen on a second laptop, so I'm going to disappear my face, and I'll point in this direction. So yeah, just spinning up the felt, and then just dunking it into the mixture. If your container has a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of a lip above the water level, then you can actually slowly raise the burr and flick off all the excess water. So then I can bring it over here and you can see that it's not spitting everywhere because I've already spun off a lot of the stuff. And then I've just got the uh, power cord going around my neck. And if we have a look here, I mean, this one's pretty well polished already, but we're just giving it a really light rub up against the surface. You can do it in a lot of ways. You can move the bird, you can move the opal, you can move both if you're really skilled. If you move the opal, I think it looks cooler if you move the opal because it uh, colour plays. And that way viewers get a better experience. Otherwise you could hold it in an angle where there's not much colour and just do this. I learned that pretty early on in the uh, YouTube filming thing. It's actually better to move the opal. Because then you get the rolling flashes and everything. Now this feels a little bit slow for my liking. But I'll grab some more cerium. It is actually definitely a little slow. We're going to bump it up to notch number two. And you can see there, so when I put press it on, you can see that there's this little kind of like milk that goes up and above. That's the solution. And you'll notice that I'm not dunking the opal. You don't want it to get hot, but at the same time, you don't want to wash off all the little serum oxide particles that you need to use to get the polish going. Because remember, this isn't like using diamond paste. There is actually a reaction between the silicon and the cerium oxide which I covered in a video surprisingly successful video being a bit bit science nerdish but people seem to actually resonate pretty well with the understanding of how cerium oxide works it's helped a lot of people and it's a pretty simple concept chemistry is not that hard just need someone to explain it in a simple simple way. Let's catch up with comments while I get this in there again. Look at that, polishing and reading comments at the same time. That is an amazing stone, it really is. Julian had, you wouldn't believe it, but Julian had a jar 
like a decent jar, not like a spice jar. He had a really big jar of stuff like this. Better than this, actually. Like some non-fossilized opal. Some actual seam stuff. He had huge chunks of absolute crystal gem. He just knows the miners well up there. And he goes up pretty often and just scoops up some amazing stuff. And of course, it sells so quickly. It sells so quickly these days. Opal's getting huge. I'd love to stare at that stone under a loop. It does have some really nice patterns. It's not the most interesting stone in the world in terms of how many different patterns it has. It's pretty It's pretty consistent. I prefer the ones that have the little kitty claw marks and stuff that pop up in various places. But I guess this one does as well. Like if you get the right angles up near that top section, you can get a little bit of chaff. Chaff, affectionately known as kitty claw. But yeah, a lot of rolling flash in this one. Real broad. People love the really broad colour patterns. Though I'm a huge fan of some small, intricate ones as well, like the uh, like moss patterns and stuff. Oh, it looks much better in my streaming software than on my uh, my laptop stream. And what you're aiming for, really, is the way that it looks underwater. It's got a bit of extra magnification, so you kind of want, like a uh, thin layer of water look and you want that without the water there and that's what this serum oxide does you can get a absolute mirror finish and that's always what you're aiming for but yeah it's a it's a really relaxing thing some people really hate doing it the polishing stage they like the shaping and the uncovering but this is by far my favorite part so I thought, since I need to work on these anyway we'll do a live stream and we'll just cover a lot of the details because a lot of people actually struggle I think beginners struggle the most with polishing. Shaping you can get the hang of. You can use stencils and stuff, you can get it right. And then the polishing, they just can't quite seem to get there. But really, it's just a little bit of time, a little bit of care, a lot of gentle, gentle work. But you don't really need to think. I'm reading comments, I'm uh, just twirling this around in my fingers and holding the burr in place. It's really uh, not that hard. Just don't create too much heat with these dense felts. They can produce a lot of heat very quickly. But because you're using water, it's actually not so bad. I don't tend to stare at my opals a lot unless... Let's see if I can get it to happen here. Unless... See that on the finger? When the light starts bouncing off and hitting my finger, that's when I start getting a little bit distracted. And it's not the opal itself, it's just the brightness kind of projecting projecting colour around. And then my finger changes colour and for some reason that kind of snaps me out of my focus a bit every now and then. Chaff is pretty sweet. Chaff is very good. All some green kitty scratches. I'd be interested in a video on orientating rough, getting best colour. Oh, like dealing with directional stones. Yeah, you'll get you'll get good at that over time. A lot of stones, especially if you work mint to be, you have to get it right or you'll get nothing. Like it's uh it's really tough. One like this, I mean like we can just do some different orientations. Here, fine. Here, not so good. Here, fine. There it's uh not so good. But because it's a fossil, it's not. It's not overly important, but with a normal stone, it's quite important that you pick that pick that face like this, and then you flatten that back, flatten that back perpendicular to that, so that it's always always standing nicely. But fossil, we don't really care so much. We just love to see as much color as possible. Do you have any cerium oxide for sale? I do. I'm actually going to list some stuff up on the website. I'm not going to put all of my stock up on the website straight away because I'm a bit worried. I'm a tad worried about um, the payment processing and stuff. Like, it's a new website. I don't know how it works fully. Hey, what's that? Oh, a chat donation from uh, the Birdman himself. Cockatoo Birdman Bill. He was actually the first member on my channel. And now the first donation. As soon as I can get to the post, we'll send you a gift. You've already sent me a gift digitally. 
God, gifts on gifts. A gift to announce a gift is uh, quite quite wild. Actually, so is this face on this opal. That is incredibly wild. That section Julian's going to love. I don't know when Julian's going to pick up these stones, actually. I don't think he's up yet. Oh, no, he is an early riser. He might be. I've got to finish off one more stone for him. It was the really complicated one. It's actually a cluster of opals together. Cluster of fossils, like a belemnite and a shell, and they're kind of conjoined, and he wants to keep them conjoined. It's uh, it's tricky, but we're going to get it. We're going to get it done. Um, I missed a question before. I think someone asked how long exactly it takes. So maybe I'll just stop this for a sec. I had this one that I was doing a bit of test focusing on. So... The amount of time it takes to get an opal done from like a pure pure rough state like this one here really depends of course on the size and how quick you are with your Dremel, how strong your Dremel is, what kind of burrs you're using, like electroplated, sintered, all of that kind of stuff. But honestly for a lot of my videos where I start with something like this and I end up with something like this, well most of the time not as good as this, this is uh, something special, it really doesn't take that long if I'm doing a freeform. It's actually probably a bit shorter if I'm doing like a cab, but a lot of the time I don't film my cabs and put them on YouTube because I feel like it's um, it's a bit it's a bit tired to do like just cutting ovals all the time, so I like to do the freeforms and I cut more freeforms than I do cabs anyway. Unless the stone says I have to be a cab, I don't do it. And it would probably take I don't know if we if we start with the eighty grit maybe that'll take anywhere from. Oh, just the polishing stage. Polishing stage, not very long. But I'll just go over the whole thing. So getting through to the final shape, the pre-polish stage, probably for something like this, it'll be a couple hours. The polishing in terms of just using serum oxide, this can be really quick depending on the material. Really quick depending on the material. Like um, the miner from Lightning Ridge that sends me sends me stuff like this. In that latest batch that failed, the the uh, the opal actually took a polish really quickly. So some opal will take a polish much quicker than other opal. Much quicker than other opal. And sometimes you'll have an opal that just refuses to take a polish. Sometimes I think the softer Kubipedi stuff, that tends to that tends to struggle to get that nice mirror finish. It can get a pre-polish pretty quick, but the mirror finish part is the tough part. And yeah, you could spend five minutes sometimes, or you could spend, I don't know, sometimes I spend over an hour on a stone for just the serum oxide part. Because I, I don't see a point in finishing a stone unless it's got a mirror finish. I know some people do like a semi-polish, or they do a polish, but they don't do a... They don't put a lot of heart into the polish, and it comes out it comes out looking good, you can see all the colour, everything, but you don't get that reflection, and the, the reflection I find is really important, especially if you want... Let's see if I can show it. Because this one's starting to get a really good polish. If you want that really crisp, crisp kind of patterning, like you can see in the centre of here, you won't get that until you get that proper, proper finish on it. Otherwise, you start getting a little bit foggy edged and all that kind of stuff. The color pattern just doesn't leap out quite as well. Like over here where it's foily and that's purple, you don't get that unless you get a nice polish on it. And you miss all those like intricate little features. And that's what Opal is really good with. Like you can see here, even the way that the colors transition into each other in this direction, you don't get that unless your Opal is properly polished. You'll end up with some kind of... You'll see the, each of the colours, you'll see them change, you'll see them merge, but you won't see the detailed lines of... Like, even those little... They're not even potch lines, they're just, like, differences in the colour color pattern. You just don't get that as well. I think it's just a duller, flatter kind of look. And see, you can see here that section there's got that little bit of sandy spot but there's a little dimple in there and you'll notice that there's no serum oxide getting baked in or trapped and that's that's the key the more imperfections like that you have the more you need to be careful with uh, letting your serum oxide dry out 
So in this section here, you'll see I'll go straight over the top of it, and there's a little bit of serum in there, but because of how much water there is, it comes straight out, and you don't want to bake it in. You don't want to bake it in. A lot of people do that, especially with porous stones, and Andamooka, boulder. You want to avoid that at all costs, because it is a pain to get out. I know you can use an electric toothbrush and stuff, and that's what I do sometimes if I if I stuff up, but you don't want to you don't want to resort to that. You want it nice and thin, and you'll get a good polish, and you won't get trapped bits. And I've fallen way behind on chat. Um. Ah, it's not a bird on Justin. I had a phone chat with him the other week. It was uh, good times. That's Justin from Black Opal Direct, for anyone that doesn't know. I don't know how you wouldn't know. He's uh, the legend. The godfather of YouTube Opal. And he's different. So even when I had a chat with him on the phone, I don't mean he's different as in he's rare or unusual. I mean, like, he is different in the fact that I'm just a hobby, I'm just a hobby cutter and polisher. He has a business, and his business supplies to a lot of jewelers, and they they don't do they don't need this. As good as this looks, they don't need this. They need that oval. They need that beautiful high domed oval cab that Justin pumps out, and it keeps his business going. He's got more people that rely on him with his opal cutting. No one relies on my opal cutting, not even me. I have a full time job. I've actually got a second job on top of that full-time job, and then I've got my opal cutting, which I probably take more seriously than both. So, at this point in time, I don't think we're getting a better polish on this. I think this is, uh, so this has basically started to dry out, and you can see with the reflection of light, it is, uh, it is very, very polished, even in the little dips and grooves there, like there. You can see the light's bouncing straight back out. So that's one that I am pretty happy with. So yeah, that's where Justin's different to this channel. And his YouTube channel is less of a displaying his hobby and more of a marketing for Black Oval Direct. An actual proper business. Though I do register this as a business. Rose Rocks is a business. In a sense, just doesn't make any money. But yeah, we will we will stop with this one and just have a nice little look at it. So doing some up and downies, doing some arounds. Spin my head right round. It's a it's an incredible one this one. This one is a, an absolute gem. I don't know what Julian's going to do with it. He'll probably actually end up selling it, but if I was him I'd be keeping it. That is one of the nicer pieces. And with Bellum Knights, if you can get the point end and this has a pretty nice point. It wasn't fractured or anything. I didn't change the shape of it like that. That's its natural kind of shape. And that is exactly what you want. Whereas these other ones over here, which we'll swing the camera over to again very slowly so no one gets car sick. Motion sick. Oh, actually, we've got to go further. Oh, I'm stuck on something. All right, over here. So have another, have another stab. We've got... 12, 3, and 6 left while I catch up on some chat. Ah, there's not a lot of technique I'm doing at the moment. I think I might do a video where I buy from Justin again. I'm trying to think of a collaboration. I was on the phone with him and he did say he'd be happy to do something together, but I'm trying to think of some sort of collaboration idea. I don't know. Does anyone else have does anyone else have an idea of a collaboration that I could uh sign him up for? That's 3. I'll give them a bit of a jiggle. That's the uh 12 12 o'clock one. It's pretty nice. Seems like people are keen on three. This boy here. This one here will give him a bit of a shine. I've seen a lot of Bellum Knight get um, set in that kind of hanging pendant. I don't know. I think you call it a drop pendant or something. Uh, it just scares me because it's... 
I mean, it's not that fragile, but it's fragile enough for me to be worried about smacking against something. Let me spin up again. Get some cerium on there. What's the time? 8.30. Still got heaps of time. So yeah, you can see this This one I was really happy with how I cut actually. Because see how this end still looks like it's sharp and jagged? Like it was in the rough? That uh, That's one of the first times I've managed to cut a stone and keep it looking like that kind of sharp, jagged edge. Because of course we can't do sharp, jagged edges. Or one, it's uncomfortable. Two, your nova points get chewed up. So it still has to be rounded, but to keep it looking sharp was actually a lot of fun. So I'll just get to polishing that one and reading comments. Edmund, with how long have you been doing this? Uh, as in opal carving. Only, only a little bit of time before the YouTube channel. In terms of using a rotary tool, I used to do a bit with sandpaper, but you get put off when you do sandpaper because it takes so long and your results just aren't as good. So I had sandpaper, which I've shown off on the channel, and then, yeah, the rotary tool. It's been a, been a few years now. It's been quite a number of years now. And then I went, oh, you know, it's, it's something that anyone could do. So you start up a YouTube channel and... What, with like two and a half years later and here we are, still going strong. Class on a cab machine, it could be interesting, could be interesting. I mean, I have to go up there, I have to go up there and visit. I want to, I want to go to a lot of the opal fields. At some point, it's just work makes it impossible. But having said that, I've built up eight weeks of leave because I never go on leave. I've got eight weeks worth of leave that I uh, could use at some point. But I also want to go to the US and go to a gem show there. I hate travel, but I would go to the US for that. Lovely stone it is. I'm pressing hard on my buff, getting a foggy look. That could be starting to starting to get some serum oxide baked in. Because the serum can be pretty fine. I don't know which serum you're using, but if you're using optical grade, it's not so, so easy to get stuff trapped in, but you're using it thicker, so I guess it is. But my serum is, uh, it's really fine. It's on the... It's well in the range of Super Serum Oxide, which is kind of like a trade name for it, I think. But yeah, I don't press too hard, because then you wear out your felt really quickly, and you can work grooves into your felt. Like, if you look at um, Justin's Black Opal Direct, when he's polishing on that vertical, vertical cabber looking thing, and he's got that felt pad, you can see all the grooves. I mean, he's doing thousands of opals, so of course you're going to work grooves. And he actually uses the grooves to his advantage, whereas I like to have my in their original shape for as long as humanly possible as long as I can keep them in that shape let's spin this around and try to work on this point it looks thin, it looks fragile and honestly it's not not for this kind of work I'm pretty gentle and it's actually not that fragile opal is stronger than people give it credit for the most Difficult thing with opal is that it uh, scratches scratches quite easily. That softness makes it quite scratchy. But because we're all experts, we can uh, deal with that. We can just repolish it. They're not clear coated or anything, so just repolish and away you go. Tucson indeed, or Tucson as it's spelled. What got you into opals? Not sure. Not really sure. Opal cutting was definitely Justin. Like, without Justin. Actually, Justin's father. Justin's father did that one video. Well, I think Justin must have forced him to do it. He's, he seems like a pretty private character, or he was. Rest in peace. 
but he when he did that that video with him and showed him a couple tips and tricks like teaching his son i thought that is that's amazing and then when justin brought out that massive frog that he carved i was like yeah that's we're doing it we're doing it i've always liked opal though don't know why not enough to become like a geologist or anything like that so I have got a publication. If you guys go onto Google and search my name for publications, you'll see that I've only really published like one paper and it's in an earth science field. That was just some work that I did for someone in my old lab. And because what I did was successful, they did a publication on it. And I'm thinking of starting to tee up with some old researchers at my old university and they have been publishing if you look up Jason Gaskell he's been publishing a lot of opal work and now that I'm a lab manager and I've got some equipment there are times when I can um, sneak like an opal like I've got some standards I use my polishing powder as a standard for some of my machines for the testing because it's pretty consistent and I want to do a little bit of actual scientific research into opals and start doing some publications there. So a little bit of a side research hobby project. You should visit Lightning Ridge, Cooperpedia, etc. Do a road trip. I will. I reckon I'll stick. I'll tee it up with uh, Julian because Julian goes out to Cooperpedia all the time, and he goes out for sometimes just for the weekend. Whoops, that's a. That's a flick. There's a fumble. Don't fumble these stones. They're sturdy, but... Crash it into the wrong thing and you'll have a bad day. I don't typically slip on stones that often now. In the first couple years, you do. You kind of lose control of them as soon as you go past 1,200 grit. Maybe 3,000. Serum is really slippery, but somehow your fingers kind of adjust to it. It's just that I wasn't paying enough attention. Lapidary Dave. Oh, it'd be cool to meet up with him. Oh, I missed a question there that I want to see about some sort of timing. You could time it where you go to Justin for a week, then go to Gem Show. Oh, Gem Show in Canada. Is there a big gem show in Canada? Canada's a long way. Uh, let's catch up. I watch how you hold and move the opals as you work with them. I rewatch the videos to look at the de fine details. Yeah, I don't think I hold them special or anything. It, they just stick to your fingers once you've worked with them a lot. Bunch more attention and subscribers. I guess that's always a good thing. I'm a very... Like, I don't go out or anything. I'm a very private individual normally. I don't even really talk much. But on Opal, it's a little bit different. And the YouTube channel is kind of... Like, if you look at my first video compared to now, I guess everyone has a massive progression when they get into YouTube, but it was rough. That was more how I normally am in those early videos. And then you kind of ease into it a bit more. The first live stream I had, I wouldn't have been able to do this because my hands were sweating. Built my own drip system with a juice bottle, aquarium tubing, and what anti-siphon valve for an aquarium. It works well. Yeah, I just use a um. They call it. It's right behind me, actually, up on that shelf. It's called a camper jug or something, and it's just a it's just a massive jug with a tap, and I just put some PVC hose. Hose on the end of it, and away you go. Turn on the tap slightly, and you get a little trickle. And I drilled a hole in my old... Where is it? Oh, which way am I pointing? That way, then. So, over there, I have a little hole, and I can feed that little tube through. I haven't done that with the aquarium one, because cutting a, cutting a circular hole in glass is a little bit more scary. So, I haven't done that. Oh, there's a little groove in there. In that opal, there's a little bit of an undulating plane just here, and you need to make sure you get the right angle and get into that. Just like here. It's one of the only times I would have kind of focused on a spot. When you're working opal, you want to work larger areas than smaller areas. You don't want to cut little grooves or anything. 
but here there must have been a little inclusion or a pit or something that I could see that I could get out. So I worked a little bit narrower, but it still has to be, you can see here, it still has to be broad enough for your Nova points to get through and for your Syrian Burr and everything to get in. Just like this. Anyway, that distracted me for a second. Tucson is the only one worth visiting. Well, it's the big boy and it is one that I want to go to for sure. If coming from Australia, Tucson is the spot, yep. You need a jab to go to Canada. Oh, like a vaccination jab to go to Canada. I've got two. When I was meant to get my third, the booster or whatever they call it, now we're doing like 10 boosters here in this country, which I'm not I'm not a huge fan of. I'm not anti-vax and I'm not pro-vax, but I, I like people to have a bit of freedom in the, in the world, especially in countries that promote freedom so strongly and then go back on that. But yeah, I've got two. When I was meant to get my third, I actually got covid so, I never got it, and then, yeah, just haven't gone back since. Work hasn't required it or anything, so... It's all good. I'd read your publications, I love Opals. Oh, trust me, they, uh, they'll be different to the YouTube videos. They'll be uh, very scientific. When we talk about Opal types, we're not talking about Boulder Opal, we're talking about CT Opal, AG Opal. It's a, it's a little bit of a different world, but who knows, I might write something up on the website about it and maybe do a video one day. I just don't think it'll get a lot of interest. It's a, Even I'm not as interested in that as I am just working, working stones that look like this. Uh, except for this side. See, if that, if that potch didn't go in so deep, that could have been a nice one to work out. Looking at it again on this on this part, but in the end you'd have to like slice along here and end up with a big flat section. You could slice from that potch line to that sand line and get rid of all of it, but I mean look at everything you're losing here. You're losing all of that, you're losing the shape. Destroying a fossil. I'd rather not. I would rather not. What is the most you have paid for rough opal? Oh, like a single stone? Ah, uh, it's tough. I mean, I've paid a fair bit for a couple parcels. But for parcels, we're talking like, you get an ounce of opal or something, it's... And it's like a dozen stones. But for a single stone... I don't know, maybe... I haven't gone to a thousand yet. Oh, not true. Um... Maybe upwards of about two and a half, but that was a that was a rough fossil with color. I've got it locked away, but that one was uh yeah that one was a couple grand. I mean they were asking a lot more for it at the time, and nowadays it would be worth heaps. I might bring it on the channel at some point actually. I don't know why I didn't do it in my top ten opals of twenty twenty one or. Whatever I do, normally. Maybe this time. Really, it should be properly locked up somewhere in a safe, I think. Um, what was that? Denver is closer to me than Tucson. Good morning, all. Good morning, Scarlet. Yeah, I know Mike's always hitting up the gem shows because he must live in the perfect area for it. Justin to Tucson, do some scientific tests with his opals. Oh, I don't think he wants me to be scientifically testing his opals. Some of them are... It's a non-destructive technique, XRD, but to actually do the test, they typically grind up a small section to a really fine powder, because the finer the better, and then you, uh, you put it in the machine. So there's no going back once it's a fine ground up powder. Maybe if he was trimming down an opal and he collected the opal dust for me, Maybe then that would be okay, but then I think we'll get too much of the wheel wheel involved. Like the metal and everything will start reading on the thing as well. You really need the clean opal and then you grind it up in... What, you grind it up in acetone in a bowl mill and then you're good to go. So yeah, I don't want to be destroying Justin Stones just for that. That huge favourite boulder of yours must have been expensive. No, 
No, not expensive. I've got that. Oh, no, I cleaned up the room. Oh, it normally sits near the desk. No, that's actually not that expensive. Managed to snag that one for about 200, I believe. Aussie dollars, so like 10 cents US dollars. The batch from Bay State Opal was a steal. Oh, that was good, yeah. Old Lou. Oh, actually, I've got to ask him to if he wants to be on the website. On the website, I'm just about to launch a whole heap of profiles for sellers that I use for Opal. And Lou will have to be included because in terms of US sellers, I I struggle to find anyone that has like sane pricing. Whereas Lou seems to kind of have the best pricing I've seen over there. Kind of like Suva and the tools, Lou is pretty nice for some rough Opal. He, I don't know, I haven't caught up with him lately, but hopefully he's gotten gotten more keen on selling some rough rough or just rubs and he's bought stuff from uh, Black Opal Direct in the past and cuts those and puts them up on his site makes jewellery all that kind of stuff incredible stuff hey Chrome. I actually don't know what kind of notification that is what did you do to do that little pop up member for five months Well, Crom's actually sent me a very interesting stone with that boulder vein opal. I've still got that on the desk. I can pop that up. I've got to work on it again. It's been put on the back burner for a while because of Julian's Julian's parcel and as well as the uh, Lightning Ridge Miner's parcel. The base day parcel, I think, was in that time as well. I've got to work on some more of those. Oh, Nancy's here. Good morning, Nancy. Hopefully, uh, Dimmy is not too cold. Nancy and I once lived very close close by to each other in old Dimmy, where I'm from. Well, Japan, Dimmy, Horsham. Varied upbringing. I don't know. I don't know what the like button actually does on YouTube. I don't know what anything does on YouTube. I just exist there. Justin and I had a had to laugh about it as well because I mean we've got the same kind of audience his is just 400 times bigger than mine well no his is more like a thousand times bigger than mine but we've got the same audience we've got the same gripes we've got everything it's it's really good it was really good to have a chat with him actually it was really good to have a chat with him polishing the inside of this I'm actually going to need to change change burrs to one of the uh, bullet kind of shaped ones I like this barrel cylinder one for polishing bell vellum knight and cabs, but sometimes you do need to go to a pointy end. Though this sharp edge on the edge of the uh, of the thing can really get into some small spaces. And here you can see there's a nice little sand part, a nice sand line, and look at that serum's not getting stuck in there because I'm not baking it in. Not baking it in. My one cup of water in that mixture is not looking looking too good. It's probably down to a two-thirds of a cup. Been using it for a long time. I'll top it up. Ah, member bonus chat. Interesting. None of the other members have done that yet. You've worked it out. You've worked out the system. I didn't know it existed, so uh, that's new. When I sell opals, I want to be affordable, at least get my cost back and enough to replace my burrs. Yeah, that's for hobby for hobby stuff. It's uh, it's really all you need. You can't really ask for too much more than that. I mean, I guess if you sell a stone, if you hit an absolute gem in a cheap parcel and you sell it for more, it just means you can buy a better, better rough parcel next time. So it's not too bad to earn a bit of money. But it's the same attitude I've got with the store. I'm only. I'm only really buying tools that I find too expensive elsewhere and that I can find a manufacturer for and I can sell them for cheaper. Otherwise, there's really no point. I'm not interested in competing with people and having a store. I actually don't like the sales process very much. I don't know how people like Julian do it. I could never bring myself to selling rough opal. I want to try. I want to try to do like a variety pack for a beginner. Like just a cheap $100. I mean, I'm actually going to make one for Nancy in the chat here. But just like a... It's basically my giveaway parcel. So one where a beginner can come in, they can cut some Lightning Ridge, Cooper Pedy, Minterby, 
White Cliffs and Amuka. They can just try a little bit of everything. Boulder, of course. Don't know why I didn't say that first. They can try a little bit of everything because I would have loved that when I started. Instead, you have to buy a parcel of each one. You have to find a different seller for each one. It's, it's a bit of a nightmare, really. And back then, online Opal was not such a such a big thing. Now sellers are online all over the place and you've got to find the good ones and weed out the bad ones and uh, it's it's a mess. It's a mess sometimes. It's a wild world. It's a big world and any growing field I think goes through the same kind of teething problems. In 10 years time it'll be, oh, people will just shrug their shoulders at Opal. Everyone will know what it is but at the moment all big diamond and stuff are killing the game. And Opal's just been chilling by the sidelines. Luckily enough, some of us are smart enough to cotton on that it's a magical, magical stone. What else do we have? NBN just died. Oh no. It took me so long to get NBN and it's changed everything. I wouldn't have been able to do the YouTube channel on uh, my previous... Actually, no. I've... Oh, no. I, I started the YouTube channel after getting NBN. My previous ADSL2 was so slow. It would have taken me a week to upload a video. I still need to buy a new computer because editing is an absolute nightmare on my laptop. It takes me longer to edit than it does to uh, edit and render than it does to cut a stone from rough to polished. Whereas if I got a if I built myself a new computer, because I used to be a computer builder, I reckon I could shave that down by at least a half. It's just the computer market's been too overinflated lately. Let's give that a little bit of a wash because it's getting that slimy, slimy feel, meaning the cerium oxide is doing its thing. And it's looking pretty good. Still wet, I have to look at it dry to be absolutely certain. But it's not bad. Not bad at all. Plane flying overhead. Living near an airport is. Well, it's actually not even that cheap, but it's a little bit inconvenient when you're trying to record videos. A lot of edits in my videos come from a plane flying overhead. During COVID, there were no planes. It was uh, it was incredible. Um, I've just picked up stone number th uh, 12 o'clock, the 12 o'clock stone, because I know everyone was going to vote for this one next. It's uh, much better than the last one. The last one is the one from the most recent video. And it's uh, a bit of a dud. I wouldn't say it's a dud completely, but it's not. It's nothing like these three. This one's got a much more delicate kind of pattern. You can see here, less of a broad rolling flash kind of pattern. It's got a nice little pin fire kind of thing on the back. And yeah. Bit of palette stuff here and there. And... It's a bit jigsawy. There's some good jigsawy parts. Jigsaw is probably one of my favourite patterns, to be honest. It's, I just don't understand how nature makes it like that. The broad flash and stuff, I can understand that. That's that's easy. But when it comes to things like jigsaw pattern, how it orientates to form that so perfectly is incredible with the tessellating jigsaw pieces. What kind of tip are you using? So this one right now, if I turn it off. You can have a look. This is just a really dense felt. Don't get the really coarse, wiry looking felt. You want it nice and dense. It holds the really fine cerium oxide much better. It provides a way better contact. And even against your finger, you'll feel that it's less scratchy. So yeah, it's a fairly, it's a fairly dense. Like you can squeeze it a little bit. You can squeeze some water out of it. You can soak water into it. But it is a very, very dense felt. God, the end of this bell night's so good. What's the focal distance of this about here? 
This was a good one. I, I can't remember the order I cut these in. I don't think this was first. Maybe it was first. Amazing colour. Some of these Bellum Knights from Julian are very much like the Ethiopian level of brightness and play. But with all the pluses of being a Aussie Opal from Cooper Petey. You can see here there's the sand plug in the end of it. No serum getting trapped in there. I mean, there's a bit sitting on top at the moment, but quick dunk in water and you'll see. No serum trapped in there. That's what you want. It's less of a thing when you're cabbing opal, though. You don't need to worry about it getting trapped. It's hard to find good ones on eBay. Yeah, it is. eBay... I haven't used eBay for a long time. But eBay used to be, when I was a teenager, eBay was the absolute best thing online. Except for maybe RuneScape. I played RuneScape a lot. But I didn't have a computer with internet when I grew up. Poor upbringing. I used to go to the uh, local library in Horsham when I lived with my mother. And yeah, I'd play RuneScape there. You could book a computer for an hour. It's good times. I mean, no one had phones back then either, though, so... Do you enjoy going further with that last one? No, so the last one's still there at the moment. I haven't caught up with Julian Julian to discuss it yet. Whether I want to... Well, whether he wants me to cut it up a bit. But yeah, this one, this one I know I set aside. I rushed the ending of the video because I was running low on time and I wanted to get a video out the following day. Well, two days later. I think I'm going to drop back to a video every five days or so instead of four. I remember the days when I used to do a video every two days. Man, that was hectic. I didn't know what I was doing either, so it was a wild time. Oh, this one's almost exactly the same size as my felt burr. But it's an uneven surface, so if I just hold the felt up like this, you'll see there's heaps of spots where it's not actually going to hit. So, I still need to... Still need to move around. This is a nice one. Hey, Chad. How old am I? I am going to very quickly threaten 30 years old in a few months. I will be 30, which is quite a mental number. I know Nancy will laugh at me because she is not just about to turn 30. She remembers probably when I was... God, how old would I have been running around there? I mean... Well, she would remember when... Two of my siblings were born. So I would have been, I don't know, three, four years old. No, that's when I was a baby. I'm not still a baby now. Like I said, 30 years old. I'm a fully grown adult these days. I feel like it. Cut back to five when you're doing them every three. Yeah, well, I cut back to cut back to four every four days. Still with a video every four days. How much time do you spend editing, etc.? So the basic the basic thing now. The only reason I want to push it back is because the amount of comments that are coming in and the website. I want to work one day on the website, but I typically do a recording. Like I might be recording this as a video now. I'll finish it today. I'll probably try to edit it tomorrow but sometimes a stone will take more than a day or I'll have something on so I give myself a buffer day so I could do this I could be busy tomorrow start editing the next day after that upload it that night for automated release I set an automated release for 7.30 or whatever in the morning my time on day 4 and then we're all done that day four, when it gets uploaded, I spend the whole day replying to comments and chatting to people on trying to keep up with emails and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. 
And then, yeah, the cycle starts again the day after that. Start recording. Recording, buffer day, edit, upload. And the cycle continues. It's a, it's a pretty vicious cycle. The giveaway, the giveaway video I did had hundreds of comments on it. So that took took up two days because it was blowing up my comments section within 24 hours constantly. So that was two days of constant replying and stuff. But I can do that while I'm, I don't know, walking between buildings at work, waiting for the lift, all that kind of stuff. So I try to sneak in a couple, couple things here and there while I'm at work. But most of the time, if I'm in the lab, I can't do anything. I'm fully in the lab. I fixed so many instruments this last week. I mean, one of the instruments I have is worth about 600000 and I had to pull that apart and put it back together, and... Oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's... It's fun. It's interesting. I might even start a YouTube channel on some of the lab stuff, because it's really hard to find good bit videos explaining how to do some... Not even complicated stuff, just basic stuff. My son was born in 93. Not a bad year. 92's a little bit better. I'm an end of 92. Ninety-one again, okay year, just, just not the best one. Let me look at that pattern there. Let's get that on camera. No, where's that section of pattern I was looking for? There we go. That orange is nice. Ah, uh, I need to tune my lights a little bit. There's a little bit too much red coming through in this picture. Too much red, not enough green. Yeah, i got to tune the light a little bit. I'll do that. I'll do that at some point. And by tuning light, I mean my panel has a... I'm, I blend like a yellower, warmer light with a wider daylight light. And if the yellow is too strong, the warmer colours will leap out a bit too much. And that's when you get more of your reds jumping through. So I've just got to tune that a little bit. Well, I can tune my camera as well to match the colour temperature, but it's easier to tune the light. How hard are you pushing on the felt? Yeah, I know, Cockatoo, I am still a baby to many, many people. I've seen the demographics of the channel, and the average viewer is slightly older than me, but that's amazing, too, because YouTube, you'd say it's a young person's game and everyone's making videos for kids, but I'm not interested in that. This isn't child entertaining. This is serious, serious gem work, as you can see from this stone. Insane. But anyway, how hard am I pushing? Oh, I don't know how to depict it well. Let's turn this off. So, I mean, people test the how cooked their meat is with their fingers, so maybe I'll do something similar. In terms of how hard I'm pressing, I'm pressing enough to kind of go into my finger just a tad. If I can get the angles right. So this is like just touching, and then it's just a little bit more than just touching. It's really not much. When you're doing the uh, polishing, polishing side of things... Oh, my fingers are getting wrinkly. When you're doing the polishing side of things, you're not pressing so that you're like dimpling into your finger. You can see there, my finger gets pressed in. It's not like that. It's just, it's just touch the surface and then just apply a little bit of pressure. You really don't need much. We're not working on friction. If I was working on friction with like a, uh, with a diamond grit and a wooden burr, oh, even then I'm not pushing that much harder, but maybe slightly harder. Here I'm just letting the serum oxide destabilize the surface and then I'm just wiping away the surface. I'm not scratching away the surface, I'm not doing any of that, I'm just taking away the material that's ready to come off. And that's how you can get a 50 nanometer perfect surface. One day I'll take a lab into a, another, a opal into another lab where I can measure the unevenness of the surface and see if I can nail that 50 nanometer. I know this powder is rated to be able to do it because I designed it that way. But yeah, it's a. Uh, it would take quite a lot of time and it'd be quite an art to get 50 nanometer, I think. Dogs barking for some reason. 
three-year-old loves to watch. Oh, that's good. I wish I got into this when I was... Oh, well, three, I don't think I had the hand-eye coordination or anything. Though I did walk early. But I wish I got into this a lot, a lot sooner. Especially with YouTube. Because YouTube, it makes you do stuff. Like, it makes you keep going. Once you commit to doing videos, you've got to have material for all those videos. So, I've been carving now every day. Every day for as long as this channel has been on. Before that, it was kind of like, you know, you'd do a bit on the weekend. Maybe, I don't know, after a stressful day at uni, you might do a little bit. Grind your fingers down on the sandpaper. But since YouTube, you're carving basically every day. Even on those editing days, I'm still carving, maybe prepping a rub or something for something. Or just doing this, just polishing up a few stones that I wasn't happy with. Found an imperfection, accidentally scratched a stone, something like that, and fixing it up. Always going. Always going. Man, chat's going so fast that I'm actually missing things. I think I pushed too hard and the colour was gone. Yeah, don't worry. Like, some of those thin... I've got a video where I did some thin bars. There have been other videos that I'd started working on a thin bar and it was, yeah, it was so thin that I basically missed the best of it, I think. It doesn't happen so much now. I've really, I've really nailed it with the Sintered Diamond. When I was using Electroplated, it was much harder. The Sintered Diamond kit is an absolute lifesaver for working those thinner, thinner pieces. You can pull up at the perfect time, switch to Novas. Those are much easier to pull up on time and then polish. Thin bars are good fun. Oh no, there's a comment that I do not understand. Is that Indonesian? I know a few languages. I'm working on Chinese now, but that is not one that I even perfectly recognize. From Tungal Budi. That is Indonesian, isn't it? I need a translator in chat. Is it possible to take off colour when polishing? But it's it's possible to take off colour. Yeah, it is. It's just uh, getting rid of material so much slower. You can also burn opal. I haven't done that, but I have heard that you can burn opal and affect the colour. Don't know if it's a myth or not, but I'd just try not to burn opal. You'd use the Dremel like a uh, crayon and just start drawing on the walls. <laughs> compare yours. Oh, I compare my polishing to Justin's. Man, I don't think I could handle that pressure. I'm pretty sure he'd beat me. Unless I just sat here for a few live streams. We could just spend 10 hours on this stone and just make sure we get to that 50. But that 50 needs a... Uh, it probably needs a different felt. It needs a much more controlled, controlled surface. And for an undulating stone, it would be even harder. If it was a flat disc, which is what it gets tested on, if it was a flat disc, would be okay. But like this, next to impossible to get 50 nanometer, I think. I just know it can be done. I just know it can be done. Thin foil bars. We do it all. Have you started to silver smithing? I have not. But I am collecting tools, and I think I have just about everything. I need to catch up with uh, the Opal Mills. The Opal Mills. That's an easy collaboration video idea there. Very easy collaboration video. He teaches me to do that. And I don't know, maybe I show him some finer details of using a Dremel. I don't... Oh, he does do some carving. So I want to see his setup and everything. He's got a nicer setup than me. I've got a two meter square section with a corner desk, two laptops, a screen, cameras all over the place, microphones. He's got a shed. I need a shed. Oh, trust me, I'm only like... Chinese babies that have spoken their first words know more Chinese than me, but all of the researchers in my research group are Chinese. 
So I'm the only native English speaker in the entire research group. So I do want to. I do want to learn. It'll help with communication and I don't know. I like languages anyway. I mean, Japanese was my first language. English, German, Italian. Tried, failed. Actually, no. I just got bored. Bored, failed. Russian, too tough, failed. Greek only enough for a few maths, maths like things. Well, actually, a lot of maths. There's a lot of Greek, so you do learn a bit, but not enough to speak or write or anything like that. Not as a language, more as a symbols use. But you do learn a lot about them. What else do we have? Cabbing machine to Dremel. Well, I guess it's a very different game. I could cab with my Dremel and compare it to him cabbing on his machine. Maybe I could do a live, like a, uh, like his, his I wouldn't need to speed up, but my section sped up and we can measure the time that it takes for each of us to get a nice oval done. His will still look nicer. Silversmithing, it's something I really want to do. I've got so many cut opals ready to go. Stunning muscle shell, but it looks rather fragile. I was wondering if it would be better to just use Nova tips than to take skin off or polish. It's a... Uh... Shells are an interesting one. So the museum, the local museum, the Adelaide Museum, has a display where they show the difference between stages of working on shells. Not really the stages, like how much you work a shell to get a polish on it. So they've got it from like completely cutting a cab out of a, out of a shell to just having a specimen shell just sitting there. And you can kind of pick and choose where you like the best look. That's what I've done anyway, and I much prefer the features of a shell than the colour. But it is it is always a balancing game and hard to hard to work out what you're gonna do. Sometimes I look at some shells for a long time. Similar with these bellum knights though. Because I could drill a hole through here, I could carve out all of that sand and everything. But Julian really did just want them scrubbed out of the surface. And I think it's worked out pretty well. Haven't changed the shape much at all. I mean, I can always tweak a design later. We can always cut more, but we can't put it back. So always keep that in mind. And just know what you're looking for out of that shell. Most of them aren't actually that unstable. They're, they look thin, but some of them are really thick. Oh, young guns. I need to do something with the young guns. I know I could go up there and crawl through them through some tunnels with them. I can get through some, through some tighter tunnels than they can. I'm built like a rake, so I can get in there, I'm sure. Opal Mills has not been on lately. I've seen a couple, I've seen a couple videos lately. He posts pretty regularly. He did a good silversmithing one recently, actually. Are you invest? Are you invest in a cab machine? I'm thinking about it. I am secretly building a cab machine. Got the designs and everything. Actually, a very long time ago, a YouTube viewer sent me an entire write-up that they did on Excel for parts and everything. And I've kept that, modified it slightly. And because I work in an engineering department, I could easily slap one together. I just need to find the time to do it. Like, I've got my two flat laps at the moment that one is done but looks terrible. The other one, I've hit a massive roadblock. That's the one that I previewed on the channel saying that equipment builds were coming. That was like a year ago. Not a year ago, but a while ago. That one hit a roadblock, so it's still sitting there under a tarp in the backyard. But cabbing machine, I can't fit in my shed. That's the big hold up. Like, I want a nice six-wheel, 
but even a four wheel I couldn't fit in my shed at the moment. The space you can see on camera now is basically the space that I've got. I'm looking at property, but property has boomed like 100% in most of the suburbs around me. And I earn some money at work, but we're talking like these properties. We had a property that was meant to, the price range was meant to be about 900 to 1.1 million Aussie dollars. And it sold for 1.7 out of nowhere. So it's it's a wild time at the moment. I'm I know that a lot of countries are seeing the same thing as well. And all my Aussie viewers, they know what I'm talking about, especially if they're in like a Melbourne or Sydney, they're pulling back now. Adelaide is still going up. Don't know how people are finding this money. I mean I grew up poor, but these days I've got a pretty good job as a lab manager. I'm not earning chump change. I've got a second job because another research group needed me to do something and they couldn't find anyone else with the skills to build a vacuum chamber to replicate Mars. But, yeah, it's 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 a tough market. It's an impossible market, actually. I'll look at a house, actually, today, a couple blocks down the street, and it has a shed. Shed is the most important thing. Uh, have I missed anything else? Mini wheel cabber. Where's a mini wheel cabber? Like I could just mount one wheel at a time and then just swap swap that off the arbor each time, but yeah. Massive shed with electrics and lights, yeah. Interested in selling? <laughs> I mean, I could also maybe rent a shed, but it's. Uh, I think the channel would have to be a bit bigger before I committed to doing something like that. And Amuka, I could go mining with Opal Mills. That'd be good. I'd like to learn the silversmithing first. That's uh, higher up on my... Higher up on my list. I've got some friends that mine up at Andamooka as well. Other than... Other than Phil. And I could go out with the Blacklighters. Hit them up. Go to Kubipedi. Rummage around through the dirt with them. Get in Opalzilla. Check it out. How's the dog going? Stop stop barking. So that's a, that's a plus. That's a plus. Probably sleeping on the couch, if I had to guess. Normally she hears my voice, though, and will uh, start clawing at my door to get in. When she does that, we'll have to call it quits on the polishing, and I'll have to get her on camera. Oh, it's actually already past nine. I think the, the house inspection's at ten, so I am going to have to call it quits soon. We got the three most important stones done, though. Let's wash the... Let's watch the, wash the slimy off this one and look at that colour. I mean, this stuff looked good rough and it only got better. Young Julian Stavrius. Opal Empire and Jewelry. What a stone. What a bunch of stones. I mean, especially these two. Let's get them next to each other and have a bit of a face off. Let's turn this off. Let's get them underwater, give them an even underwater battle and then get them out. I mean, one's got a lot more varied colour, smaller pattern. The other one's much broader, a lot more red, which is always a bit of a winner. Really, that potch is, it does have a bit more potch in it though. I don't know, I don't know which one I like better. Probably the point, just because points are cool. Let's... Glue them together. I mean, just great stones. Great material. Bell Knights are so cool. This was once a living creature. Two living creatures. They died and turned into this. When I die, hopefully they, uh... We've worked out a way to bury me up at Kubipedi or something and we'll, uh, wait. Dig me up in... A bit of time. Give it a bit of time. And hopefully I come out like this. 
Bloody hell, I'd look better than I do now. That'd be a huge win. Oh, I saw some question that just flew off then. Let's have a look at that. Let's go backwards. Where'd it go? Do you shape with Dremel as well or just polish? No, I shape. These these are all done with the Dremel already. So these were rough opals and this is already shaped and everything. Like this stone here, I'm going to do with the Dremel to get, get to that thin colour bar in there. It's going to be a tricky stone. I haven't actually decided how I'm going to do this one yet. I was just using this to focus the camera before I started the live stream. But yeah, everything will be done with the rotary tool. Just like you're seeing now. I mean, there's a bit more technique and shaping and stuff than just rubbing a piece of felt up against the stone. Polishing is the easiest part for sure. And maybe that's why people don't like it. Um, great live... Stone I wanted finished was the one not done. Ah, yes. Yeah, that one is not done yet. That is the uh, multi, multiple opals in one. I actually think this stone here that I'm working on now actually needs the uh, 1200 Nova, 3000 Nova, then back to the cerium oxide. But we'll just mess with the cerium oxide for a few minutes while I get through the last, last of the questions and stuff. And then we'll call it quits. And all of this, if you've missed the start of it or you've had to duck out, all of this will be put back up on the YouTube channel. I'll just cut out the starting where you're still trying to find your footing. Well, I'm trying to find my footing. The countdown is not reliable when starting a live stream, I've learnt. Ah, jelly opal. Jelly. Crystal jam. Jelly. Disappointing. Disappointing this one. Why did these fingers not translate to absolute fire colour on the bottom side as well as the top? Why does it peter out? Oh, there's a little dimple there that I reckon I could round that out and get rid of it. That would actually require the 600 probably. 600 Nova for that small spot. No worries, Terry. Now, yeah, everyone ducking out. That's good. Good timing. I actually don't... I just find that this is... YouTube tells me this is a good time to do my video uploads and streams and stuff, so I just go with that. Even though it's pretty early and I get up at... I got up at 5.30am to get ready for this one today. But I'm feeling pretty good. 10am for Paul, so he's on the... East coast, well, eastern states of the country. Yeah, go down another two millimeter. I got heaps of space here. But some of the fingers go right to the edge. Like the red fingers go right to the edge and then they just, they just refuse. They just refuse. See, they flash across. So I'll lose those ones and get into more of the greens that are in deeper. But yeah, it's just what we call jelly opal. It just goes a little bit translucent kind of... See, the fingers do terminate there. Not in a honeycomb pattern, Ethiopian style, but in these little, not even pin fire, just this stretched kind of pin fire. But yeah, jelly opal. Cooperpedia and the jelly opal, it can frustrate sometimes. No matter how much polishing I do, like see underwater it magnifies as well, so I can get it a little bit better by polishing it better, but it's still not the same as the top. See, crispy colour, jelly opal. Crispy, jelly. Ah, crispy jelly opal. How annoying. How annoying. 
Yeah. See, and that's what you do. You creep in with the Novas and you creep in with the Novas and you creep in with the Novas and then you're like, oh, I've got to the sand core. I've also got every size Nova, every grit Nova, and I want to make a video on that. I'm going to do an Opal from start to finish without the Sinter Diamonds and just use the Novas. And we'll see what the Novas are like. And then I'll do a battle of the, like, 50,000 Nova against my Cerium Oxide and see who wins. Maybe my Aluminium Oxide as well. Battle them all up. See how it goes. Maybe some Diamond Paste. But yeah, we will slowly wrap up now. So yeah, anyone that's leaving, catch you later. Catch you later. It's a good, good relaxing live stream. I think we've covered a lot of details when it comes to polishing and other things in general. Life, Opal. It's all good. All good stuff. Except for Jelly Opal. Jelly Opal's not good stuff, it's annoying. Two AM in Paris. Good old Paris. Serum will win, you reckon? I reckon it will as well. I reckon I'm better with Serum. I've never used the ultra high grit Nova points, and I think Serum will be a lot faster. The felt has better contact than the Nova point. I like this little flat edge I made here. Nice little flat edge to orientate it so it sits up this way. Though the inclusions on the front aren't the best. The colour just is. At least take off the sand. Uh, I'll, have to ask, I'll have to ask Julian, but he did want to keep the sands. He did want to keep the cores on all of them, even this broken one. So, maybe I can get rid of it, but... At that point, it's no longer a bellum knight. It's just a, it's just a chunk of opal. Because at least the sand still tells you. And look how big this bellum knight was. This is the biggest squid tube I've ever seen. If it was intact. This was the same as those other three. Julian would be sitting on, ah, oh, like no joke, tens of thousands. Probably more, depending on how long it was as well. How intact, fully intact, I don't know how how big this thing would have been, but we'd be talking hundreds of thousands, it'd be one of the best ones out there. Have a 50,000 burn, never really used it. Well, I got one and I've never used it at all, so... I just, re yeah, I'm, I'm probably, for the same reasons that you haven't used it much. It's, uh, there's better options, I think. Plus, not being in the US, it's much more expensive for me to get an overpoint. I mean, I've got the boys at, well, Chad at Suva. The Suva team, they make it affordable, and they've made it affordable for me to get them over here and start selling them, which has been amazing. Bonsoir. Good night, Jackie. I'll call it quits and start my day. You can go to bed. Yeah, Toronto, you are correct. You can't be too disappointed when just one one turns out a bit dodgy with the imperfections in the face. Did get rid of a lot of sand on it. And then, yeah, a bit of jelly. Let's bring the whole family together and sign off for the live. Well, the whole family minus, minus one missing one. And of course you want to just roll away. Let's put you in the grooves. There you go. Gem. Bellum Knight Opal. Some of the upper grade stuff that Julian's, Julian's got. But he does have as good, if not better. Even just in seam. In seam variety, if that's more your thing. Bellum Knight is more my thing. He knows that. And he knew that I would work on these without hesitation. So, yeah. They are much nicer polished. They're in water now, but they don't need to be. They'll look basically the same as what you're seeing now. Very nice. Except for you. Get out of my eyes. Gets demoted off screen. Very nice. 
Hey, Kenneth. Time for beer. Man, someone's keen. Time to go look at a house and have a coffee. I only had half my coffee before starting this live stream, but... That's, uh, that's alright, I'll make another one if I've got time. Got 30 minutes to get there. No worries, Nancy, and I will be in touch about putting together a parcel. It'll basically be similar to the giveaway one. It's not going to cost a lot, so... Oh, and there's the door. There's the dog scratching at the door. So that's that's me being told to get moving. Great material. Nice work. Ah, you don't have to work so hard when the material's that good. So definitely go check out Julian. He has this stuff and better. So thank you guys for swinging by. I don't know how many we had, but there were enough of you to have constant here we go there we go to have constant comments coming through and questions and it was good it's easy to do a bit of polishing and talking and stuff at the same time so it's actually not so not so cold here now i've only got one hood on but yeah on that note i'll get my ugly head out of the way and you can have a look at nick's nick hoops's beautiful boulder opal painting he's got more coming He's also starting to mine on his own mine, and he has a pocket. He has a pocket of boulder opal that'll blow our socks off, and he'll send some here. Down here is a tiny little guitar with a capo on it, and there's my drum kit that I'm setting up again. When I first started the channel, I packed up my drum kit and said I wouldn't get it out until a thousand subscribers. A couple years later, and we're at like four and a half thousand, still haven't put it back together. I only got it out of the storage the other day, so that will happen. And then I'll get back into playing drums if I can even do it anymore. But yeah, let's have a quick look at comments. Ah, da, 